How's it going everyone? In this video we're going to go ahead and take a look at our next topic when it comes to VXLAN and we're going to deploy our multicast rollout through all the spines and leaf switches so that we can start leveraging multicast. Now multicast is obviously going to be an enhancement to our design because it's no longer going to require us to statically define who we're going to be peering to. And the idea is actually very very simple. We're going to define a multicast group. In this case here, we're going to keep it super, super simple. We're going to just going to turn multicast on. We have to turn the feature PIM on. Once we turn the feature PIM on, then we're going to enable PIM on all of the inter switch connections. So all the routed links that we've already deployed, as well as the loopback addresses that are going to be needed to fulfill the communication. We're then going to set a static RP, a rendezvous point. Now, before we get into the actual config, a lot of people that are familiar with multicast at this point in time, usually this will be a, a bump up point where they'll be like, ah, yeah, I really don't understand why that's necessary. So I'm going to steal an analogy that somebody that I highly respect in the industry, uh, her name is Denise Fishburne, she's well known. She's also referred to as Fish in the industry. And when I started learning multicast, I was struggling to understand some of the specific concepts of multicast. And one of the things that she I found a video of hers online, and basically she described the RP or the rendezvous point as like a dating service. And the dating service is going to join the source to the receiver. And the idea is that the, the source is going to be the guy, the receiver is going to be the girl. And the guy and the girl are single. They want to go out, they're single and they're ready to mingle, right? Well, what's going to end up happening is they are going to want to meet each other, right? They don't, maybe they live in the same area, but they're not aware of each other. They don't have the same social circles as each other, you know, not the same set of friends. So, but they're meant to be together. Well, what's going to end up happening is they're both going to go to the same dating service. For the sake of argument, we're going to say match.com. Well, they go to match.com, they both register, they pay whatever they have to pay, they go through the little process of setting up the dating service, and they both get in a, a profile. Well, what ends up happening is the guy goes out there and says, hey, I'm looking for a girl. The girl says, hey, I'm looking for a guy. They have very similar qualities in mind, and guess what? Match.com matches them together. Well, the RP is what brings the source to the receiver. So the source will go ahead and say, hey, I'm, you know, uh, the, the RP will basically recommend to each one of the endpoints, the source and the receiver, hey, receiver, the source looks like it could be a match and vice versa. Hey, source, this receiver looks like a good match. And they are introduced to each other through the dating service. All right, cool. Well, in a normal, at that point in time, normally you would have what they call a source to to receiver shared tree join. What's what's the shared tree? A shared tree means that the traffic is coming from the source and it travels to the RP and then from the RP down to the receivers. It's a shared tree because you are going to be sharing the information amongst all the receivers. Now. The way that this normally happens is there's going to be a point in time where you're going to transition from the share tree to the source specific tree or the shortest path tree. And there's a, a prune process that happens from pruning off of the shared tree to the source based tree. That's not really applicable here because we're not actually leveraging multicast in its full capabilities to actually do what it's meant to do here. We're using multicast for any type of broadcast, unknown unicast, or multicast, or bum traffic from any one leaf to any other leaf. So if we have a particular PC that needs to ARP for an IP address or for a MAC address, or you have a situation where an endpoint needs a DHCP address and the DHCP server is located on another leaf, you end up sending this information to the same group address. So we're going to use 224 1.1.1 because it's very, very easy to work with. We're going to use the same multicast group on all of our leaf switches in order for us to be able to communicate with one another. So the idea is if we have PC13 sends a message out towards 9K1 and is received in on E1 slash 9 and 
it's basically any type of communication that is like ARP or DHCP or anything where we need to go ask any of the other leaf switches for some information before we can continue the network communication, that information is going to be sent to a multicast group. Now, the multicast group is also being listened to by all of the receivers or the leaf switches. And so what's going to end up happening is the communication is going to be sent out to this multicast group and that every other leaf switch that's attached to that VNI will also be listening on that particular multicast group and they'll be able to receive any of the updates inbound from or any of the, like whether it's an ARP request a or anything along those lines and that's really where this process comes into play so without any further ado let's go ahead and get through the configuration piece and see exactly what it is that we need to go ahead and do so we're only gonna we're gonna configure this on all the switches just so that we're all on the same page so I'm gonna go ahead and log in real quick to all these devices and as we're going along and doing them we're going to type in feature PIM I'm gonna go to 9k3 admin and then the password I'm going to turn on feature PIM, go to spine 1, same thing here, feature PIM, spine 2, feature is going to be PIM, oops, feature PIM, and lastly, Nexus 9K6. Feature. All right, now with the feature turned on on all the switches, what we'll be able to do is enable PIM on all of the interfaces. So we're going to type in interface E1 slash 1 through 2. It'll be IP PIM sparse mode on the transit interfaces as well as loopback 0. Just like that. And then we're going to repeat the process. Interface E1 slash 1 through 2, IP PIM sparse mode. Interface loopback 0, IP PIM sparse mode. Spine 1, interface E1 slash 1 through 4, IP PIM sparse. Interface loopback 0, IP PIM sparse. And it's a wash, rinse, and repeat for all of this config. Fairly straightforward to get working, but as long as you have it in play, you're in good shape. And then flat interface E1 slash 1 through 2, IP PIM sparse, interface loopback 0, and then lastly, interface E1 slash 1 through 2, IP PIM sparse, interface loopback 0. All right. Now that lays out all of our initial configurations. If I go in here and do a show IP PIM neighbor, I will be peered to both 6.2 and 6.4. So this tells me that I'm PIM to, uh, I am I have a PIM adjacency set up between the 9K6 and my spines. If I do a show IPM route for the multicast routing table, I can see the 232 slash 8 is being used. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, on all of the leaf switches, we are going to, and the spines, we're going to set a static RP or static rendezvous point to point towards. So what we're going to do, and we won't actually, back over, back over here, we won't actually get any real M route information to show up in the routing table until we convert our NVE member VNI configurations from ingress replication over to multicast. So configuration of our RP is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to use spine one as our RP. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to statically configure the loopback as the RP. So to do that, we're going to configure the loopback here, we're going to type in IP PIM, and it's going to be RP dash address, and we're going to specify an IP address. Or in this case, here's going to be 10.0.0.2, and we're going to specify for a specific group address. So the group list is going to be 224.0.0.0 slash 4. So basically, every th multicast address possible. And I'm just going to take this information right here, I'm going to copy and paste it onto all of the devices 
so that we have that set up where we need it to be, like so. As you can see, the process is not very difficult to set up, right? If we do a show IP PIM RP, we can see that we are currently using 10002 and all that good stuff that goes along with it. We do a show IPM route, we're not gonna see anything, right? And that's because, again, we haven't flipped over the NVE interfaces to, to use multicast. So right now, I'm gonna come over here to 9K1. I'm gonna type in interface NVE1. I'm gonna do a show run interface NVE1. And as you can see, we still have ingress replication. So I'm gonna type in shutdown so we can disable the capability. And then I'm gonna go, under, go underneath member VNI 10010 and no ingress replication, and it's gonna be protocol static, okay? Now, what I'm gonna type in here is gonna be MCAS group, it's gonna be 224.1.1.1, and I'm gonna go ahead and no shut that. Same thing on 9K3, I'm gonna to go to interface NVE1, I'm gonna shut it down, member VNI 10010, no ingress replication protocol static. And MCAS group is gonna be 224.1.1.1, and then we're gonna go ahead and no shut it. Now I'm gonna do the show IPM route command again. And now you're going to see a little bit of a different uh, setup here. What we're gonna see is a star comma G entry saying that regardless of who the source is, the star is always gonna be the, sor uh, the source, meaning it's in any source multicast, ASM, to this specific group. We're gonna send traffic to this specific group and this is gonna be a receiver's aspect of how everything's gonna work. So we don't care who the source is, but if it's traffic is going to 224.1.1.1, we're going to pay attention to it. Now, and our incoming interface is gonna be E1 slash one, our neighbor is gonna be 3.2, which is gonna basically essentially say the spine, uh, spine one. And we can see that we're using the NVE interface in order to do that. We also have an S comma G entry, or a source to a group mapping, which means that 9K3 will be a source of multicast traffic, and it'll send that traffic to this specific group address. We are going to be using the NVE multicast rib IP PIM is going to be the me uh, method that we're going to use that. And right now, the incoming interface is going to be loopback zero, because that's what interface is tied to the NVE config. I go over here to 9K1 and I do a show IP M route. I'm gonna have the same output. The only difference between the two is the source is gonna be 10.001 slash 32, not 10.003. If I come up here to the spine and I do a show IP M route, you're gonna see both show up. You're going to see a 10.001 and a 10.003, both pointing to 224.1.1.1, but in this case here, that's basically as far as it'll go. Now what I'm gonna go do is I'm going to go back to 9K1 and I'm gonna do a show NVE peers. And right now nothing's happening. If we come down here, we do a show NVE and could do a question mark. We can say the VNI and we can see what's happening. We can see that it's gonna be using multicast in this particular case. Now we go to PC13 and I try to ping it's going to eventually work, which it does, which is what we're looking to have happen. And the reason, the way that it's able to find the information is through multicast propagation. Now if we come back over here to 9K1, and I hit the up arrow, I now have a peer. I have a peer to 10.003. And that's because I just sent a ping, and because of the fact that we have a mapping to where the multicast information is sitting, we're in good shape. So we're basically going to send the information out to the wire, and when the message goes out, it goes to all of the multicast receivers that are on the fabric. Because 9K1 and 9K3 are both saying for the VNI of 10,010, use 224.1.1.1 for communication. So if you receive traffic in for 224.1.1.1, go ahead and respond to it. Essentially is what's happening here. Same thing over here. If we do a show IPM route, we're going to see a multicast aspect looking like this. So we know if we do a show show uh, show L24 show system internal 
L2 forwarder Mac, we're going to have a mapping built just like this. This is what this is the big deal here because once you have identified where a particular MAC address is and what NVE peer IP you need to point to it, it's very very easy to send traffic back and forth. If I go back to 13 and hit the up arrow and go to four, go to 20, that will also work. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the multicast process really seems to shine. A lot of people like to deploy it this way because it makes it very very easy to work with. And that is pretty much it for deploying multicast in the environment. Doesn't take a lot to deploy it. And but again, let me preface this by saying if you don't have a multicast background, if you don't know how multicast operates in the environment, I suggest you spend a little bit of time in the up lead up to diving into those details. So you understand how the, the flows are happening and all that good stuff that goes along with that. Once you understand how the PIM works and how sparse mode works. It makes it very, very easy for the logic of this mechanism to really come into play and go from there. So that is pretty much it. We are going to go ahead in the next video. We are going to take us to the next level and deploy BGP in our environment. So we're going to have to enable a few additional features. We're going to add a second VNI. We're going to add in customer two, and we're going to start scaling the environment up just a little bit. Not much, just a little. And we're going to be deploying BGP with the second VNI and going through those steps. We're not going to do inter VNI. We're just going to be replacing the data plane propagation for VXLAN with BGP as the control plane and all that good stuff. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. I'll catch all of you in the next video.